What I'm saying is God had compassion on me. Watch this, y'all. He knew that made a move early in my life. So God says this, whatever the clone, the Palmer one, the caterpillar, and the locusts have beaten up, and wait a minute, God, I would love it if you just help me now. He said, but I'm just helping now. I go back years. And the years that they have done, I'm going to give it back. In other words, y'all, we got years of trouble sometimes and, and damage. He says, but I'll give it back. Praise the Lord. Amen. Still reading here, loved ones. In verse number eight, they shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Will thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? God is God of when I bring you down. Are you gonna still say you're God? Give me loved ones. See, that's that pride of man. God break folks. All kind of things happen in people's lives, family, and people still refuse to yield to God. In other words, you still saying you got the answer? You still saying you all that? You still saying I don't need you, God? And God's a God of you. You won't tap out. You just, I just got to kill you. You won't tap out. You know I got you in a death move, and all you have to do is humble yourself. Okay, God. Okay. Nope. People still want to say, I know what I'm doing. I got to get kill me. Do you see it out there? I'd rather die. Just kill me. Well, so be it. Because you, it's going to kill you. But what happens is, it won't be God. It'll be you killing yourself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's, it's time to stop blaming a whole lot of things on God or the devil. Put stuff on yourself. Amen. You know, folks, we look for excuses. We're good at that, y'all. I don't never want to say that I did it. Hey, still in verse 9, would thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God, thou shalt be a man and no God in the hand of him that slayeth thee. He say you're still fragile. You ain't nobody. And I'm, I'm showing you that this can be destruction unless you humble yourself. Verse 10, thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, now you get a little deeper now. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. The king of Tyrus is representing Lucifer. Lord. He says, Thus saith the Lord God, thou Sealeth up the psalm full of wisdom and perfect beauty. So, so much for this little red devil with porch pitchfork and little tail and all ugly, ugly, ugly. Satan was, Lucifer was beautiful. Well, one of the biggest destructions that can ever hit mankind is people's beauty. Y'all, you notice we won't always say as soon as you, you saw people on the street or hit clubs, you fell in love with folks. And then I asked them, I'm in love with you, by the way, what's your name? <laughs> Show you how that's been moving. Why do you think clubs are dark? <laughs> it's a setup. They that walk dark and stumble. <laughs> Why do you think the music is blasted? I can't, God, look, devil, no, I need to, I need to be the only voice you hear. I don't want, I don't want you to get the voice of God up in you at no time up here. In other words, you need to get out of here. What you doing in here? It's like the music's so loud. Hey, raise the roof and hell beneath you is enlarging itself as you're raising the roof. I'm just saying this is how it goes, and, and somebody need to tell me the truth. Look at this. Still in verse 12, you can't deal with this devil. Don't try, y'all. You got to go back to the Holy, Holy Ghost. You got to do this. And so many people, y'all, the devil sealed up the song full of wisdom. He's the smartest angel ever made. Devil, and he never took it from him. So how are you going to deal with him? And that wisdom is still with him. And this will get us all. All God had to bring some beautiful. Some people won't, won't stop doing way too beautiful to stop. They're too sexy for their shirt. I'm just saying I can't stop. I'm too sexy. Ain't it the truth? Sexy saints. 
I mean, sexy sex on the runway. Women walk like that because a man taught them. Sissy man taught them. All the great models are taught to walk by sissy man. Oh, he come out with his cape. I'm sissy man. He teach him how to walk. I saw him on TV. I said, I was looking at a documentary. I said, look at this mess here. Ugly looking guy. Ugly spirited. Teaching women how to walk. All the great models have to go to his modeling walking class. Since when, sisters, do a man have to teach you how to walk? To show you to walk must be wrong. Amen. We know a woman's body moves a certain way anyway. You don't have to exaggerate it. Praise the Lord. And, then, and there are certain clothes that will make you exaggerate it. As soon as you put them on, your whole spirit changes. Amen. And the two saints. Women. And I, don't, I don't think one woman in here got this without looking in the mirror. Ain't it real? I mean, you may put some clothes on, but it's some point you in that mirror so you adjusting things amen so whatever you go you see it first and you determine how much it's gonna be uh, made visible to others you know what cuz the spirit overtaken praise the Lord amen you're on the runway you need to run away it's the Lord Whew. amen now, still reading on here, loved ones, in verse number 13. Uh, well, still at the bottom of verse 12. Look, and perfect in beauty. Y'all, you know, even the men, if you don't watch it, y'all, we people can't hardly tell us for, for the world. We dress like the world, act like the world. Just saying we want to be fly like the world. You know, but the Bible speaks of modest apparel, not costly with it's like, I mean, uh, this is no offense. Well, how much does that purse cost? What? Same as the car note. <laughs> the rent. The rent. Some people got a purse, cost two, three car notes. When they bought it, they were ashamed when they bought it. But still bought it. I just got to have it. And pray. The name on it is the name of somebody that's serving Satan. Hey, are we being real here? Look at the name. I bet they're serving Satan. Ain't that just like scripture? I came in my own name and you received me not. Another shall come in his own name. Him you shall receive. Look at Satan. It's like, I'm going to set this up. You're going to serve me some kind of way. Praise the Lord. Amen. I was going by the uh, the Kingdom Hall was driving back onto this church. It's going by the Kingdom Hall. And I said, Kingdom Hall, Jehovah Witnesses. I, it just came. I said, Kingdom Hall and false Jehovah Witnesses. I said, somebody need to just, uh, if you're going to mark or something, get that out there. Ain't no kingdom here. But kingdom Ain't no true witness here. But the witness of that of uh, satanic powers. In other words, y'all, pay attention, y'all. Nobody really wanted Satan no more. We used to to help somebody out, y'all. If Pastor wrong, did he just want? Ain't no middle ground. Ain't no if and buts about it. Ain't no two ways about it. If you're wrong, you just wrong. Okay, you blew it. Now let God blow on it. Praise the Lord. Bring it to God. I need for you to blow on this because I blew it. Is God bring it on? And I'll take it from you. Praise the Lord. We saying is while you living, you got a chance to really get it going on with God. Amen, family. But yet a lot of us refuse. Amen. And if we refuse God, refuse God after all this, I'm going to show you and show you how it builds up hell in you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden, the God. And let you know this ain't the king of Taurus, see, because he ain't been in the garden. Praise the Lord. And thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. Uh, pay attention, y'all. Look, that's what the devil showed. He'll have all the saints 
Once again, let me turn. I ain't looking at nobody. If I have all the saints and two, none but jewelry. Because he covered this. This was his thing. Praise the Lord. That's why in Isaiah uh, chapters 1, 2, and 3, but God began to come against the jewelry because man took the beauty of it and began to worship. Isn't that amazing? So he began to actually curse it. Now, y'all, I ain't saying nothing wrong with it, but if he's your God, if you happen to break your gold necklace and you're about to go to hell of it, something wrong with you. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't a necklace. It's the wrong spirit all the time. Remember, everybody know my story about the sister Julius here to witness it. The sister had a gold necklace on that was possessed. A spell was on it. And that, as long as she wore it, those spirits had control of her. Until God showed me the, that necklace and told me to take it off. And all those spirits left after that. And the lady said, you keep it. I said, I ain't keeping this. It, it, it's somewhere out there in the yard. I don't suggest you go looking for it. But I said, I ain't, even, I ain't, I ain't going to sell it. I, I'm getting rid of it. Praise the Lord. Look, I was tipped to the fact of how much it costs. It, it may cost me. Praise the Lord, loved ones. But look, as soon, and then she told us that some ladies, now look, she, she's a religious woman. Ain't that right, Sister Julie? But watch this. She gone and hanging out with psychic advisors. But look what happened. They end up having her work for them. Ain't that right, Sister Julie? And bringing her check. On the bar. Don't know how it got there. And I'm telling you, saints of God, uh, we got to watch out for one another. Look, whispering one another's ear some good stuff, y'all. Let them know, I'm, I need to know what you're going through. But whatever you're going through, I'm with you. I got a partner that I can touch and agree with. You hear me, loved ones? Whispering each other's ears. Don't be telling folks mess. And don't be trying to get all super discerning. I kind of think you're going through this. What you, what you think? Is that what it is? If it was God, he would have told you. Shut yourself up. You know what I, mean? I, I think. I think they said what you think. Do, do you confirm it? If it's God, you already know what it is. If you don't know what it is, it went for you to know. Stop being all nosy. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, and still in verse 13. Now, 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 this is why a whole lot of people saved today. They can sing like little birds, but God look at them like vultures. Amen. Uh, at the very bottom of verse 13, you see this part? The workmanship of thy tabrics, you see that? And of thy pipes were prepared in the, in the day that thou was created. Look like the world got all the best. I mean, they, I mean some of these people can sing. You know, God gave him that gift. The, the voice was called pipes. And look, do you know he never took it from him? So one of the things that built up hell in us is a gift that we got that we don't give back to God. When now these people testify, they say this. They came up in the church. There's something. They know where it came from. But what happens is this. They come talk to them. Praise the Lord. And what do we offer them? Look at this, y'all. Beauty, riches, wisdom. He's building hell up in it. Do you know this, y'all? Everybody that die, that have all these gifts and talents, they die horrible deaths. You know why? Because now they remember that they should have gave it to God. But it's too late now to give it to God. Praise the Lord. Many of them are on drugs because they're running away from God. Trying to numb themselves. Praise the Lord. So they want to feel a little better. At some point, they want to make a gospel song. So they can feel a little better. Amen. They want to come to your church. And then the church get packed so they can sing that one gospel song. And go back to serving Satan. Praise the Lord, loved ones. Amen. Uh, still reading on here in verse number 14. Thou art... Now, this, gonna, this one here going to really hit home, y'all. Thou art the anointed cherub or angel that covered. Now, y'all, one of the things that can help us go to hell is your anointing. Isn't that amazing? Do anybody tell that? The very anointed that should destroy and break yokes. Know why? Because your anointed can make you, you know, uh, nobody, nobody need to tell me nothing. I'm so anointed. 
I know what I'm doing. I'm just too anointed. Ain't that amazing? Makes sense, don't it? Praise the Lord. He says, uh, he says, I have set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. Now it's great to get deep here, y'all. By the multitude of thy merchandise, by the multitude of things that you that have been given to you by God, they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Now you wouldn't know this, y'all. When these spirits begin to accumulate in you, you're a violent person. Now pay attention because all these spirits are the things that accumulate hell. Isn't that amazing? And so you and I can't leave one of these little embers burning. It's like I built a, f a fire and I kind of put it out and walked away. And then the next thing I know, I wonder why the forest fire is all around me. Don't know, I didn't put all of them out. I put out some thinking I'm wise. But I didn't take my time and put them all out. And now my forest have been burnt down. Because I didn't take my time. And I saw that little amber, that little small little thing, red hot. But I figured it's too small to burn down this big old forest. So I'll leave it be. And just a little leaven. Leaven the whole. Just a little. Leaven. And all you do is take your time and just one more stone. One more little douse of water. And it's out. So I believe God got us saints that love him, showing us there could be one little amber still smoking. Don't leave it be. Don't walk away. Don't ignore it. Don't deny it. Take your time and put it out. I don't care if you have to keep spitting on it, but put it out. Amen, family? Amen. Still reading. He says, look at the, in the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God. I will destroy the old covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. That's another issue. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. You know, we call wise people bright. They're really, they really bright. It ain't your skin complexion he's talking about. He's talking about your intelligence, that you're a bright person. They even got now test, IQ test, to determine how bright you are. And that's something. How can a man know <coughs> how smart you are? But this is him saying, I'm so smart, I can determine how smart you are. Do you know why a lie detector test is not still to this day admissible or admitted in court? Because there was a man that took it and said he was from the moon. And the, scene, the machines registered as though, yes, you are. He is not lying. And when they found this out, they put a law out and said, no, you know, it can give you some credibility, but you can't bring it to court because people have been known to fool it. So look how smart people are. They think through science they can figure you out. But watch this. There is a spirit out here, y'all, that none of us are smarter than. Now, suppose you run into that spirit. Remember the old saying, look at me, look at me. Because if you look at me, I can tell if you lie. People have that so down, Pat. It's like, I know they weren't lying because they didn't. And they never moved their head, their posture never changed. I know they ain't lying. Well, in Chronicles, in Second Chronicles 18 and Second Kings chapter 22, same spirit. And the, the spirit came and the Lord said, what shall you do to the people on earth? He said, I shall be a lying spirit in their mouth. He said, go to. It. And Thessalonians, he says this. Because we love not the truth, I'm going to give you a spirit of delusion that you believe a lie. Now, y'all, that's hard to believe that a spirit is at some point going to so overtake mankind that the lie to him would be pure truth. He won't be able to see it no other way. So 
taught all his life that the sky is blue. All of a sudden now, the devil tell him it's pink and red, and he gonna swear up and down. I don't know what you've been talking about. Who been telling you it's blue? The sky is pink and red, and I'll go to hell over it. And that's how this delusion is gonna overtake mankind. Amen. You be looking at him. What's wrong with you? Amen. I still reading here, loved ones. And uh verse number 17, he says, I will cast thee to the ground. Once again, y'all, demons have hit the earth. Praise the Lord. I laid thee before kings that they may behold thee. Okay, now stay with me because this next verse is going to give you where hell comes from. Thou hast defied, defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy inequities, by the iniquity of thy traffic, by the way things keep going in and out of my life, and I ain't trying to stop it. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. Do you see hell being created now? Do you hear it, y'all? Do you see it? A fire came out of me. It ain't a Holy Ghost fire. It ain't, it ain't like uh, Jeremiah put it, it ain't shut up in my bones as a good thing. So, y'all, there are two fires. One is unholy, the other is holy. When God give you the Holy Ghost, he give you that with fire. And he prepare a kingdom for that type of spirit. So here the fire come out of him, but look at the things that's accumulating in him. You catching it, saints? That even calls the hell. Now, watch how this is going to make sense to you. Have you ever seen people act up and say they got hell in them? You ever seen it or heard it or said it yourself? Or can you relate to that, saints? They got a lot of hell in them. Another term we say, they got the devil in them. You buy from, you write on both accounts. And, but how did it come? It accumulates from rebelling with God. We build our own hell. So watch this, y'all. Once we build our own hell, God prepared that place. You got that, saints? Amen. Now watch this. You start living right for God, and he, he prepared a heaven for you. Whatever spirit you have, there's a place prepared for it. I'm going to let you see it. Praise the Lord. He says, uh, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all men that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shall thou be anymore. So look, you, when you hit this earth, you're going to be a terror. But at the timing of God, I'm going to take it all away. But until the timing of God, y'all, this terror is here with this hell. And it's trying to put hell in us. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Matthew chapter 25. I tell you, if it makes sense to me, I know it's making sense to somebody. Because y'all, because I want to show you, even though you're saved, we have to be careful that that hell don't come back. Amen. This is what the church world is running from. That the hell don't come back. Now watch this. We people that have our temple swept, garnished, and cleansed. Okay, let us go back. And what happens? These seven demons that left us, they come back looking for us. In other words, what you think they're bringing back? Hell. Seven times harder. Praise the Lord. They're bringing hell back to you. You thought you had hell before. Hmm. Praise the Lord. That's why a lot of people need to pay attention to the little ambers. They're still smoldering. Bad attitudes. Self-righteous. Think you know anything. Can't nobody tell you nothing. Always want to keep up stuff. Irritators and agitators. That's hellishness. Those little ambers of hell. Praise the Lord, loved ones. Amen, family. Makes sense, don't it? Look, some folks, they, they can't have, they don't have a life unless they're keeping up some stuff. I'm talking about folks in the church. Amen. They don't have a life. They be dreaming of what can I do to keep up some mess. 
They got that clever trick of throwing the rock, hiding the hay. Now, don't look at me. I didn't do nothing. I'm just here. Why are you blaming me? Why are you even saying something about it? So look at Matthew chapter 25 and pick it up with verse number 33. 33 through 41. And it reads, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then shall the king say, the king, every king has a kingdom. The king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit, inherit the kingdom. Look at this, prepared, because it's prepared for that spirit. It's prepared for that master prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And he reads on and gives some key points of what has happened to us and what spirit overtake us. So look at verse 35, for I was hungry. Look, reason why we don't want to help nobody because we have picked up some of these spirits in Ezekiel 28. I'm hungry, but you, you hear the rich saying this all the time. I got mine, what's wrong with them? How come they can't get theirs? You hear that wrong spirit? Look, look. Uh, they could have went to work like me. We got to watch it. Then we say that ourselves. Praise the Lord. Look, I work hard for my money. Praise the Lord, loved ones. Look, look they, I, they can easily look healthy to me. Uh, you may not know what spirit they be of. They can be just as cuckoo. Uh, try having a conversation. And especially when people say, I, I know you. I remember. You were standing right behind me at the restaurant on Pluto. And now you realize something really wrong with you. But they in this, they spaced out. They in that astronaut world. They, they took a travel and they still out there. It's floating around. So in verse 35, for I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me now stay y'all how many people are doing this because if you're not these are ambers of hell ain't that amazing now if you're not doing this then you're busy doing a whole lot of stuff you shouldn't be doing and you're busy doing a whole lot of nothing watch it y'all we're busy doing our own little world we're busy being selfish. Watch this. We're busy beautifying ourselves. Isn't that amazing? Don't even know we're building up hell in us. Have no idea. Look, we're busy. I'm all about me. That's Look, I'm busy building the heart of God because I'm God. Watch this. No matter what God do, he's slaying us. I won't tap out. I give. I surrender. Okay, he's God. All right, then I'll let you go. But no, some folks, I ain't going to surrender. Well, God's God, but well, I'm going to keep on putting you in this hole until you die. Praise the Lord, loved ones. Look, he can't show me the mercy to free me because I won't tap out. I got to admit, you got me. And the only way to get away is to humble myself too. Amen, family. Now watch this, loved one. Because he's trying to let people know uh, that he got this thing, but people don't want to do it God's way. Amen. And so drop down to verse number 38. He says, when saw we thee, stranger, and took thee in, uh, naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto me, of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then he shall say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Praise the Lord, that fire that come out in the midst of me from all this mess accumulating in my life. Look at this, y'all. Prepare for the devil and his angels. So in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28, all this mess kept accumulating, accumulating, and accumulating. And then God saw the fire that was in him because he brought it. And now God is a God of, I see right now, it ain't leaving. So I'm going to prepare a place for it. 
you got that loved ones for it our, our permanent location for it and unless god is allowed see spirits now pay attention y'all he was speaking to a spirits spirits cannot repent once they fall they have fallen forever but humans can you got that y'all now if humans repent the place prepared will be unprepared because that won't be your place because you have a different location for your spirit amen praise the lord loved ones so and let's go over here and we'll finish up here for, for right now praise the lord and uh john chapter 14. john chapter 14. And pick it up with verse number one. And one through four. Let not your heart be troubled. He come right out trying to fix this stuff. <laughs> Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Now look at this. In my father's house. This should answer some questions also when people say, I saw heaven and I saw shacks and places that went all nice. Uh, you didn't go to my father's house then. Amen, loved ones. You went in my father's house. Amen. Amen. And ain't nobody living with you in that house. Praise the Lord. So look, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to, look at that, you see that? Prepare, amen? Because he's preparing himself for the king that's in you, the master that's in you, amen? So if the king is, that's in you is Satan, and he's your master, a, a place is going to be prepared for it. Since we have God, our place is going to be prepared for it. Praise the Lord. He prepared a place for that kingdom. Praise the Lord. Amen. I prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, there sh ye may be also. So look, once again, there are no certain sections in heaven that you're going to be over here and you're going to be over there. He said, wherever I'm going to be, you're going to be. Praise the Lord. Ain't no separate houses from the house of God. Praise the Lord. Your mansion is in his house. His house is symbolic to heaven. Amen, family. So he's letting us know that you know, it's got to come down to this place, family, and we got to get it. So I want to leave you with this. If you ain't saved, you got hell in you. And a place has been prepared that, watch this, y'all, you prepared the place. Because of what you let accumulate in you and you stay in you. Amen. Now you need the Holy Ghost and that with fire so you can have the right fire. Praise the Lord, loved ones. And that's simple, ain't it? And we're going to keep it simple. So you that are saved, you got the right kingdom. You got the right fire. So you go to the right place. Amen. Because there's only two locations. You only go to one or the other. But you go to a, what? This is why y'all you are working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You still letting God stir up your pure mind. Praise the Lord, loved ones. That means you still got some issues, but you're going to God still. Amen, family. Look, so that no ambers of hell is laying around in your life. That will end up causing you to go to a place that you thought you weren't gonna go to. Amen. So look, watch this, y'all. If I'm not gonna do the will of God, I can easily. Let these spirits overtake me. Instead of being in the mirror, looking at all my beauty, I need to be releasing the beauty of holiness. Look, instead of I'm doing all this labor for my own works, the works of darkness, trying to make my little world go around, I need to let the world of God go around and let it, it uh, move me, be my traffic. I need to let him order my steps. And get busy for him. Now watch this, y'all. When I do this, whatever bothers me can no longer stay. Because I'm no longer feeding it the fire it needs. 
Praise the Lord, loved ones. So Satan thought at the final end, because I'm still anointed, God won't do nothing. So in Isaiah 14, he, he tried it. He couldn't hold it no longer. And he tried it. He said, I will, I will ascend above the throne of God. I will be like the most high God. I will be in the congregation. And God has got a, mm -mm. you shall be brought down to the sides of the north. You, sh you shall be brought to the pit. And he said, and they that look on you shall narrowly look on you and said, is this the one that opened out his presence to let the people go through? Is this him? Look, he's a little amber in the sight of God. But he set the world on fire. So that's why we even have to watch our tongue. Because he said, let your voice, your speech be in heavenly places. But we set hell on fire with our tongue. We keep the fire going. So we all have come a long way, but we don't know it. We may have a long way to go. But you, you've at the point of no return. You've crossed the line. There is no turning back. And the point of no return is the day you get saved. Praise the Lord. There ain't no turning back. Amen, loved ones. Ain't no turning back. So I'm, I'm saying this, y'all, because hell can come back to us, even though God put the fire out. But we can let things accumulate again. Makes sense, don't it? That's why we still have in the church world mean saints, meaner than junkyard dogs. And not only mean saints, our uh, key dead saints. Praise the Lord. Rich saints that still greedy as they could be, don't want to help you. Praise the Lord. Don't even know. Uh, look, beautiful saints. Um, look, I'm too beautiful. Remember, you said in the church world, I'm too beautiful to praise. I might miss up my head. Too beautiful. I want to wrinkle my new. What's, what's some of those designer codes? <laughs> I want to wrinkle my stuff. I mean, they be in the churches. They come in off the runway. <laughs> Sit in the congregation. It's like, mm -mm, I will pray some dignified. Praise you, Jesus. <laughs> God bless the Lord. <laughs> Can't even sing. You know, you, some songs you got to get loose. They just do that. They refuse. Let us sing praises to our Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Look, they even catch that. I think I'm singing too loud. I might mess up something. I'm too cute. I've seen this in churches. Whole church, too fine. To die with God. It's like, and, and this is a spirit they exalted because of the beauty. Is that so? Look, and, and don't know this is accumulating. And it's accumulating until it's building up a fire. So, saints, if we're violent, these are accumulations. Amen. If you're going to sock somebody, put it on their feet. Praise the Lord. Let me dot in their eyes and cross in their T's and make them in. Praise the Lord, loved ones. And, and you know it can happen. Praise the Lord. I ain't talking about nobody raising their hand. Please don't. But you know that this spirit can accumulate and you can go off and you have, have gone a long way out, way out there. Because this thing can accumulate. Now, after one thing accumulate, it brings in the, the door of other things. Praise the Lord. And now you can't tell it nothing. It's lifted up, it's exalted, look, and it still feels it some kind of has some kind of anointing. So we beat people down with the anointing. I feel feel I'm a, of God, but if you got the real Holy Ghost, it's gonna tell you that ain't the way to do this. That ain't it. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. You may be still be saved, but God ain't pleased. But he's, he's trying to warn us, saints of God, work out that salvation with fear and trembling. Work that thing up out of you. So right now, if we are in the last days, we'll know what God is showing us, hitting things. He ain't showing it for other folks to see it. So here's a little thing here. If I don't repent privately, he'll expose it publicly. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Why? Because he's going to do whatever it takes to deliver you. Amen. Amen. Ain't no shame in God's game. Look, he loved me too much to let these little ambers be building, and I'm going to burn down my whole forest. Look, and y'all, you don't burn down the forest alone. There are other things in the forest that live depending on the forest. 
Praise the Lord. That don't mean nothing to you, but wait till you burn them all up. You took away their living. You brought them down with you. Didn't pay much attention. Amen. Just a little silly for us. See, but you're about to destroy other lives. Y'all, you don't go down by yourself. And you don't go to heaven by yourself. Praise the Lord. Amen. Any questions, my lovely family? Amen. So look at it, y'all. The master that's in you, that will be the place prepared for. Amen. Yes, sir. Everything that was taken from you while you were living your life before you met Christ. Now, remember, you when you when you were born, that has a twofold meaning. When you were born, the devil was stealing from you. You didn't even know those things were being stolen. You had no idea stuff was stolen because we're ignorant of the devil's devices. And even now, when you get saved, all of the inheritance the devil can steal. Let me show you. Uh, you can stop paying your tithes. He's going to steal because God cannot rebuke the devourer. You don't have to connect the church. <laughs> You open up doors for him to take. Well, God, that's what he said. Repent. Do your folks so it's over. Will you start over, please? So I can give back to you. So he want to give back. Your abundance is basically what was taken. It just come back to you in abundance. Because the devil took abundance from you. Praise the Lord. He said, now I will be your life in the length of your days. What did he take from me? The wages of sin is death. What did he take from me? My living. Some people, the Bible said, beloved, why die before your time? Don't even know. God promised us a certain amount of years. You won't get them unless you're saved. And then you got to watch that. Praise the Lord, because he said, I'll be your life and the length of your days. Because I'm going to give back what the devil stole. What is he a thief? And he's been stealing from you for years. That's why we got to all come back to God and repent. Praise the Lord. And God, I repent. Because the devil has stole abundant life. Y'all, it ain't nothing wrong with going through, but you ain't, let, you ain't supposed to let what you go through kill you. Praise the Lord. Uh, make you useless out here. That's destruction. So, I mean, I need to stay before God to make sure that my little wise, brilliant mind, I know what I'm doing. What you're about to do is get religious. And then God's God, oh, you, your heart is lifted up. Can anybody tell you nothing? You think just going to the church will be sufficient unless you become the church. What a waste of time going to church. Because the whole goal of God that you recognize you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Then God said, now if you destroy that temple, if you defile that temple, I'll destroy it. So now watch this. If I repent from any defiling it, he'll give it back life. Is that good news? What he said is every form of recovery that can be given to mankind is available right now it don't matter what has happened what matters is god is what's happening that's all that matters so 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 that's why i heard somebody even praying that god forgive folks for gossiping gospel is a killer and one day you're gonna be killed by it gospel separate chief friends it separate the best friend the very person you gossip to Pretty soon, you're going to gossip about them, and they're going to hear it. The only way to fix gossiping folks is to go off on them. I'm just putting it uh, my bonics type way. But scripture says that an angry continent will turn back a back by the tongue. You don't, you get in people's face. You tell them, you better stop talking about me. I heard about it, and they're going to try to get away with stuff. But don't even have no conversation about it. Just walk away. They get the point. Praise the Lord. They ain't tell them, let me hear it again. God going to get you. Praise the Lord. Because that's one of the biggest killers in the church. That gossipers have no life. They, that's their life. That's what they look for. It. That's their life. That, they, that empowers them. They... They, the main character in the movie, they, number one, they get the Academy Award. It's like, yeah, I got news. I can't wait to share it. But it ain't good news. Praise the Lord. It's killing news. And folks, don't stop it. Remember, as the way you judge, you shall be judged in the same way. 
and the thing that'll catch you off guard. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, what time are we supposed to be on service, y'all? What, what time? Praise the Lord. Do everybody hear? Amen. Now, let me tell you this. The rapture is going to occur at 1101. No man knows the day, knows the hour. It's just an example of just keep being late. Praise the Lord. <laughs> just keep being late. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's stand, my lovely family. Amen. Uh, all I know is this, that we all got a lot to work on. Y'all, don't be pointing to other folks and trying to work on their stuff. You'll miss working on you. Amen. Now, help them, you know, uh, become great in God, but don't try to destroy nobody, y'all. Amen, loved ones. Amen, everybody. Amen. Hold your hands up, family. Now, remember, y'all, if we go ahead and just minister unto people, you'll win souls without trying. Because what you're doing is when you minister unto people, you're showing the love of God. Amen. Now people see God. It's like, I want to be saved. Remember, it ain't hard. We just ain't doing it. And the reason why we ain't doing it, we're busy doing other stuff that ain't worth nothing. Amen. It's just a selfish thing for our own feelings. Praise the Lord, loved ones. So when the club is calling your name, take the take your name off the list. Uh, you used to call me and I used to answer. The scripture said when they pipe music for the people in the market, sooner or later, that ain't my jam no more. Amen. I hear it. I remember it, but I don't follow it no more. Amen. It won't be no more boogie nights. Amen. Because I know in the boogie nights, there's a boogeyman. Amen. And nobody never told me about the boogeyman. He's trying to get me to the boogie nights. Praise the Lord, loved ones. Makes sense, don't it? And a whole lot of people don't know them spirits waiting on you. God, I want to thank you for exposing us all on a personal level. For delivering us all on an even more personal level. I want to thank you, God, because you ain't mad with nobody in here. But you're glad about everybody that pressed their way. I want to thank you, God. You want to heal us from the violence. You want to heal us from lifting up our hearts. You want to heal us from we, we too beautiful to be really saved. You want to heal us from that foolish pride of when we see you slaying us, God, and we still want to acknowledge you as God. We want to be healed, God, when you show us how fragile we are. We're still trying to act like we tough as nails. God, help us to recognize, even we that are anointed, that you're only anointed because of God. And God is not respect of persons because of your anointing. Help us, God, when, we, when iniquity have us going down a certain road. Open up our eyes. That I may say I'm on a collision course for myself. I'm going to run right into me. And I ain't going to like it when I do it. Because when you run into you, you run into confusion. And that is not the spirit of God. Help us to realize when riches come, you said for us not to set our heart to. But to remember where your heart is, that's where your treasure be also. Help your people to realize simple things we need to do to tweak the Holy Ghost in us. Just feed the hungry. You'll find yourself ministering. Clothe the naked. You'll find yourself caught up in God. You'll find yourself not caught up in the TV so much. You'll find yourself not being so idle. Saints, we gotta come up to the level of Christ. I ain't talking about going to another level. Just go to the level of God. I did let him give increase from that point on. But you got to get busy for the things of God. Other than that, the devil will have you busy doing his will, which is a bunch of nothing, a bunch of destruction, a bunch of idleness. Get busy and God will heal us all. The Bible says he heals some as they went. You may be the ones that he have said, I'll heal you as you go. So if I don't go, I won't get healed. Others may be ones that he healed immediately. Others may be ones that he put spittle on their eyes, but then said part two, go wash yourself in the pool. Others may be 
go dip yourself in the river seven times. What do God want to do for you? You got to ask him that. And ask him, what, how do I get my cleansing? Because whatever he put on you, you can do it. You can do it. So saints, we can be unfaithful to the church all you want, but you're not being unfaithful to the church. You've been unfaithful to God himself. It's just you showing your symptoms of what the problem is in the root. Because in the world, you did whatever it took to fulfill the calling of it. And whatever, it did not matter. Once it called your name, you went well beyond it. Even got paid Friday and end up broke before you can get home Saturday. Because you just released, released, released because you felt the spirit of giving. God said, cast your bread on the wall of him. And after many days it shall return. In other words, it's a good investment when you give unto the Lord. God, I command blessings to be on your people. I command you to look on us with compassion. I, I bind us to your mercies. I bind us, my God, to your forgiveness. I bind us, my God, to your will and your love and your kindness. And I loose us from condemnations. I loose us from faults and errors. I loose us from foolishness. I loose us from demonic speech and demonic seducing spirits that's been thrown in us to make us think this is all you ever be. I loose us from nightmares and I command us to be a fulfillment of a tale that is being told. To make it plain, I am a dream that will come true. I am not a nightmare in a reality. I'm a dream. You are a dream that will come true. And so shall it be. So fret not thyself because of evil doers. Though they come to eat up your flesh, they're going to fall a thousand over here and ten thousand over here. But you praise the Lord for it shall not come nigh thee. So let the Lord be the light of your life. And don't you be afraid. Let him be the strength of your life, saints of God. Let him be what, what he is. I want you to praise him right now as your deliverer. Yeah. You don't even have to tell him what you need to be delivered from. Hallelujah. I just want to thank you for delivering us. Hallelujah. Delivering us out of the congregation. Hallelujah. Delivering us out of the pain and the sorrow. Delivering us out of things Hallelujah. visible and invisible. Delivering us, God, out of pride. Deliver me out of things I don't even know to say. But I command the Holy Ghost, my spirit to make intercession because I know not how I should pray. Make intercession concerning my infirmities with moanings and groans that cannot otherwise be uttered. Do this, God. Because you are God and there is none like you. You are God, there is none beside you. You are the God. You ain't just the only one to call on. You're the only one we need to call. And you will answer because you love us. In Jesus' name. Amen, saints of God. Hug the Jesus in someone next to you. Thank God Crystal pressed her way out already. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, Brown. Holy ground, Dylan Jacob Brown. Holy ground. Brown. Holy ground, Dylan Jacob Brown. Holy ground. Thank you.